the next polysaccharide that we are discussing now is cellulose. Cellulose is a structural polysaccharide because it helps in the formation of cell wall in case of plants and it is a homopolysaccharide. Homopolysaccharide means it is made up of only one mono unit that is one type of mono unit and that mono unit is glucose. So before this we talked about starch. Starch is also homopolysaccharide made up of only glucose and cellulose is also mono, uh, homopolysaccharide made up of glucose but there is a difference and the difference is in the type of bond formation. Here the bond is 1,4 glycosidic bond but the bond is 1,4 or we can write it here as beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. That means glycosidic bonds are also of two types and this is totally on the orientation of functional groups on the carbons. To understand it in a simple manner, suppose we make this glucose molecule, the ring structure and we label the carbon numbers and see how the bond formation takes place. That will help us understand what is the difference between simple alpha 1,4 glycosidic or beta. Say this is carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Here also 5 and 6. In this case, this is H and OH and here it is OH and H. Now when water molecule is lost, Say this is how the water molecule is lost. So the bond formation takes place in this manner. When the two glucose molecules which are making a bond and the carbons in between which the bond formation takes place, they do not have the same orientation of the functional group. The bond which is formed is called beta glycosidic bond. What difference does it make whether it is alpha glycosidic or beta glycosidic bond? For breaking a bond, we need a particular type of enzyme. The enzymes that we have in our body are all alpha enzymes. That means they can break only alpha glycosidic bonds. So beta glycosidic bond which is present in cellulose cannot be broken down by animals like us. Then how do some animals are able to digest this cellulose? This we have discussed in detail in the chapter of digestion where we talk of cellulose digestion. But quickly animals like cows and buffaloes they are able to digest cellulose because they have symbiotic bacteria in their stomach part and this bacteria produces an enzyme called cellulase and this enzyme is capable of breaking this bond. So animals are not able to break this bond on their own. If some animals are able to do it, they are able to do it with the help of certain microbes. Like termites can digest cellulose but they have a protist which is called trichonympha. Cows buffaloes have a bacterium called ruminococcus so they help in breakdown of this bond and it is only one four bond that is cellulose is also a linear molecule so cellulose is a polysaccharide which is linear and the reason for its linear nature is because it has only one four bonds but the one four bond is a beta bond and to break a beta bond, we need beta amylase, which we cannot synthesize. So cellulose, again, another very important polysaccharide. It is helping in formation of cell wall. Other than that, where else is cellulose present and can we use it in some other ways? So if we have to sum up uses of cellulose, we can list out few important things. Cotton fiber is actually 
percent or more than ninety percent cellulose. So ninety percent is cellulose in case of cotton fibers. Not only cotton, other fibers like jute, hemp, they also have forty or more percent of cellulose. Few chemical variations, that means if we dissolve cellulose into something or we make it react with something, that also can be used. For example, cellulose when dissolved in a base or alkali, that slurry which is formed is used to make rayon. And this rayon is known as a synthetic fiber. So this rayon which is obtained is also obtained by dissolving cellulose into an alkali. Next modification is cellulose acetate. Cellulose acetate is used to make films and shatterproof glass. Shatterproof glass. Nowadays, the windshields of automobiles are made out of the shatterproof glass. Very simple to understand. When something hits a normal glass, the glass breaks and its pieces fall off. But nowadays when we see a car and suppose it has uh, hit by a stone or there was an accident, the, the glass breaks but the pieces don't fall off. They remain in that layer itself. Such a glass is known as shatterproof glass and cellulose acetate is used to make such kind of glass. Another chemical variation is cellulose nitrate. Cellulose nitrate is used to make explosives. One more use of cellulose, it is carboxymethyl cellulose. Carboxymethyl cellulose is normally used in making ice creams. In making ice creams and reason why it is used in making ice cream because it provides smoothness. In many ointment also this uh, carboxymethyl cellulose is used to provide that smoothness or a smooth texture to that thing. So these are various uses of cellulose. It is important constituent of the cell wall and in cell wall when we talk of cell wall formation we know primary, secondary, tertiary layer along with this cellulose fiber there is one more substance that is hemicellulose and there can be few more things which get deposited in it. So this is a structural polysaccharide because it makes a structure and homopolysaccharide because it is made up of only glucose molecules. Most important thing that we have to remember here is the bond is 1,4. 1,4 bond means it is a linear structure but because of different orientation of functional groups on the two carbons which are making the bond, the bond which is formed is a beta glycosided bond. To break such kind of a bond, the enzyme required are beta amylases and animals do not produce such kind of an enzyme. So they need certain symbiotic organisms to help in digestion of cellulose.